Hey, I'm Zach. Just, oh, is Jesse driving around in his car again? Let me call him. Hello? Uh, Jesse, you know, we uh, have to be recording Tesla Time News right now. Where are you? What? We have to do what? Uh, remember Tesla Time News, that little show we do every week? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm just busy, you know? You're, you're busy? Yeah, I'm driving my car. Oh, yeah, yeah, your new Model 3. That must be so fun. I, I just, I can't stop driving it. So, uh, I mean, maybe next week or maybe next month. I, I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll have to see. Maybe just for a pit stop? I mean, can I charge? Yeah, you can charge. How's that? You charge and then we'll do the show and then you can keep driving. All right, sounds good. All right, let me try that again. Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 118. On Now You Know. Did you have a good little drive there? Oh, absolutely. Sorry to take you out of your car. Oh, that's fine. Uh, Want to just do the news with me now? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Okay. Excellent. As always, our show is brought to you by our amazing Patreon patrons um, who support the show every single week. And we want to make sure that you remember the BOR, which is Build Your Own Robot Kickstarter, which is still going on right now. It has about 25 days to go, and uh, they have some really cool perks. So head mm -hmm. on over there if you want to buy some robots for someone you know. And also, just in time for Christmas or holidays, limited edition, now you know, baby onesie. Yeah, only 50 available. So right. get on over there to Teespring if you'd like to get it. And we just had a great uh, Patreon live stream the other day. Mm -hmm. all, all of our great Patreons were joining us for that. So um, remember that every month we try and do a live Patreon question and answer with you guys. So check that out and join us next time. So it appears that Tesla is on to their second phase of their South Australian VPP. Vice President President? Uh, remember, that stands for Virtual Power Plant. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah, so they already have 100 homes, which are all acting together as a power plant. So their goal for the next phase is to add another 1,000 houses to this. So this would be uh, solar panels, so 5K of solar rooftop, mm -hmm. and then a 13.5 kilowatt hour Tesla Powerwall 2. If each house in this virtual power plant has that, mm -hmm. then you have basically a kind of giant power plant. Right. Spread over across an entire city with absolutely no pollution. Right, and the benefit of that, they've already found from the data, is that they've had a 70% reduction in the amount of energy use from the grid. Wow, so each of those homes has a 70% less use of the grid. Right, because they're getting solar energy stored in their battery. Wow. I mean, Pretty cool. That's really awesome. And the ultimate goal is to have 50,000 households as part of this virtual power plant. That would make it a really powerful power plant. Wow. So our European friends must be pretty excited because the Model 3 design studio has opened across Europe. A lot of people are excited about this, but there's one reason why it's even extra special more important. Yeah. Every European, or I mean, every person who um, orders their Model 3, mm -hmm. they, you know, they put in the reservation, now they actually order the car. Mm -hmm. They put in another $2,500 order. Okay. Um, and that's to, you know, cement the their production, place to right. start mm -hmm. the production of their car let's say there's thirty thousand orders in the next quarter right that's 75 million dollars this quarter oh that goes on to tesla's bottom line and then if we're also going along with the thirty thousand, uh you know orders mm -hmm. then in the in the next few quarters that's another thirty thousand sales right because if you order now it looks like they're starting they're going to start delivering them in february of 2019 so yeah that would go on the next quarter's books right and these are the high margin cars these are the two highest margin model threes mm -hmm. right the performance and the um long range and so that means that they're getting these nice high margin cars which makes them a lot of money right it's a really smart business decision because now they can wait a little bit longer before releasing the thirty five thousand dollar car which right. i know we're all waiting for Right. And this gives them more time to bring down the actual production cost of the car. Right. Now, check out this video, Jess. Mm -hmm. uh, you see here that there's a bunch of European uh, Tesla owners mm -hmm. and Tesla kind of gathered them together. Didn't really tell them why. Just I probably told them, like, we want to film you in front of your car. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about it. And then sneakily, they uh, drove a Model 3. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind, these are European, so they haven't right. even pro seen the Model 3. Exactly. Drove the Model 3 up behind them and then was like you know what, why don't you get in and, r and give it a test drive? Right. And uh, so they were blown away. I mean, very smart marketing here, because yeah. we all know that Tesla doesn't really do commercials. Right. Um, so this is 
about as far as Tesla goes with the commercial. Right. Because, I mean, this doesn't go on TV. This just goes on YouTube, which right. is free. Right. So, I mean, instead of spending a million dollars to place this in a, a television commercial, they don't have to do that at all. I was interested to see that under European range standards, under the WLTP, um, it was granted a 544 kilometer range or 338 miles, which right. is better than the Tesla rated, you know, 310 miles. Right. I mean, WLTP is a little more forgiving right but unrealistically so right like i mean because you can get 310 miles on say the long range model 3 but if you drive it like crazy you could get much less right you know if, if you were just like flying like you probably were today i mean come on <laughs> and also for our uk visitors it turns out the model 3 is now appearing in uk showrooms so, so check out your tesla showrooms in your area because honestly the cars look so much better in person in person for some crazy reason all right so we've been giving you updates about clean to antarctica what was that again jess so this is a vehicle made out of 100 percent recycled plastic that is going to go to the south pole using only solar energy yeah our friends edwin and elizabeth they're there now as we speak and they're giving us updates so we thought we'd pass them on to you the footage you're seeing here is they had a couple rough nights mm -hmm. uh, they had basically whiteout conditions they had to stop the solar tracker set up camp and just wait it out because right. you can't drive in those conditions and they were near crevices which are these deep you know fall to your death uh right holes and, they're, in the and they're covered with snow right. so i mean so for people who are like oh yeah going to the south pole no big deal that's like there are no like there are no Sherpas to the South Pole. No. Like It's not like Everest or anything like that. Right. It is super, super dangerous. And they're doing this basically to prove that solar-powered expedition to the South Pole is possible. Right. I mean, this is, this is amazing. And then the next day, luckily, after a couple of days of bad whiteout conditions, it cleared up. They were able to continue their journey. Um, but they hadn't been really expecting to get the snow because I guess at this time of year, it's supposed to be pretty clear. They said that because of climate change, all kind of weather patterns are off. So, wow. and just take a look at this map here, Jesse. So right. they're near Patriot Hills. Um, and I kind of thought, oh, well, that must just be right where they were dropped off on the boat. Uh, no, that's like 500 miles inland and they're in the middle of nowhere right. now. So uh, they're well on their way. They're there right now. Yeah. Like, and I know that when you see this kind of footage and stuff, you're you're watching a Nova and it was, uh, it was filmed, you know, months and months ago and they've been editing the footage for weeks and you know and they're slickly produced this is this literally just happened like two days ago right they're still there they're still traveling um and they do need your support yep. i mean they have like a mission control uh back in the netherlands mm -hmm. um of people who need to make sure that they stay alive right um and those people need to get paid mm -hmm. and this has all been you know through like corporate sponsoring mm -hmm. and support from people like you. So I really encourage you to to head over there and to um, support them because it's it's such an amazing thing. I mean, when they come back and they're like, yeah, went to the South Pole on just solar energy with a recycled plastic vehicle. And it feels good to be a part of it. I know. It's, it's amazing. So is Elon going to make boring road legal cars? I mean, the, the Model S, the Model X, the Model 3, they're all, all very exciting cars but now he wants to make boring cars what are you talking about uh elon tweeted boring company product will launch on december 18th more than a tunnel opening will include modded but fully road legal autonomous transport cars and ground to tunnel car elevators oh no i think what he's talking about here so there was supposed to be a party happening today yeah um but i guess they pushed it back a week because mm -hmm. they're gonna be showing even more than just a tunnel they're going to be showing these modded transport cars. I don't know what that means exactly. I think it's these. Um, remember in all the slickly produced um, Boring Company skate marketing material we've yeah, seen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that this actually would fit in the tunnel that mm -hmm. he's made, but maybe it's something like this, or maybe it's a Model X that's been modified. Um, we have no idea. I mean, this is pretty exciting. Right. That basically b beyond just showing us the tunnel, they're going to be showing us... Uh, something to go in the tunnel. Something to go in the tunnel along with the elevators. I mean, the tunnel car elevators, that's exciting. That's a lot of technology to figure out how to get something from the surface down to the tunnel and back. It's an elevator. Yeah, but not the typical, like, going down. Like, it's it's yeah. way more complicated. No, I mean, it's, it's very exciting. I'm, I'm excited to see what this boring car is going to look like. Yeah. Does it does it go through the thing and then it kind of goes out in surface level and then does a little bus route and then come back down and zip back? I mean, that makes sense because, I mean, they're going to be doing the Dodger Stadium dugout loop, which right. is going to go from LA to the Do Dodger Stadium. And that would be really helpful, right? Because it would let you off in Dodger Stadium. Maybe it would 
travel, you know, around and p- pick up passengers and drop them back down. Right, because I mean, then it's similar to having, say, uh, like a bus network right. that then, you know, then you have to get off the bus, get on to a train, and then go somewhere right, else. All these transfers, right? In this case, you would just hop Stay on a little seated. pod. Mm-hmm. You'd, you know, it would do its little route, and then it would zip over, and then it would do another little route. Right. I mean, that's kind of an interesting mode of transport. Yeah. Hmm. My city skyline's brain is uh, buzzing. All right. So Business Insider has leaked some information Mm -hmm. uh, specifically about the Model Y. Now, you remember Business Insider, especially the reporter here, Lynette Lopez. She's the one who um, found Martin Tripp, who is the Tesla engineer that uh, was a whistleblower Mm -hmm. and started spouting off all these negative things about Tesla. So she's at it again with articles that I don't know if how accurate they are. So we're going to report on this, but we, according to Tesla, this information may be kind of outdated. So mm-hmm. she said that she found documents that revealed, uh, these are production documents from Tesla, revealing that the pilot Model Y will be built at Gigafactory 1. So first of all, that's big news if it's mm-hmm. true, because that tells us where it's being built, and that it will be built um, starting June of 2020. August of 2020, production will really start, and by September of 2020, there'll be 2,000 cars a week being made. So that could be big news. Mm -hmm. Also that there'll be a third row seat in the Model Y. I thought this was supposed to be a smaller car than the Model X. It's supposed to be built on the Model 3 platform. So yeah, how would you fit a third row seat? Because you barely can fit one in the Model X. Like the third row seat we have there, which seats two people, you got to be fairly small people to fit there comfortably. Right. Then we hear that there'll be an IP riser and a center console riser. And then we hear more information that the Model Y will have 7,000 production a week at Gigafactory 1 and 5,000 a week at Shanghai Factory by early 2021. So by November, December of 2020, there'll be 2,000 a week being put out. I mean, if these numbers were true, that would be really good information. But Tesla did say, quote, the timelines and information shared here are outdated. When we have details to announce, we will certainly share them. In the meantime, we remain focused on Model 3, which we are excited to bring to Europe and China early next year. But Tesla did not dispute anything but really the kind of the dates here, I think. So, I mean, they they said that the timelines and information was outdated. To me, that that seems like maybe some of this stuff isn't true. So, I mean, I want to get back to the third row seat for a second. Yeah, me too. That's big news. If you wanted to put three rows, I'm just thinking of the Model 3. If you want to put three rows in a Model 3 you'd have to get rid of the front or something. Like, it would have to be a bus. It would have to look like a, a VW microbus. Okay, or yeah. Or minibus or, but, you know. But you wouldn't necessarily have to get rid of the trunk, right, because you could fold those seats down, kind of like in the Model X? To me, it sounds... It, it It's bringing me back to, yeah, the, the VW bus that they're yeah the, i mean the, the back the end buzz cargo right the back end would have to be much higher to fit those heads i mean you, if you're uh, having some yes. slope in the back that's gonna not work so it has to stay high and kind of you know right it has to look honda pilot ish because don't forget the images that we've seen from tesla are just front end images we've never seen the back end right of course so this could be kind of a departure from what we've been thinking of because i've been always thinking of kind of a sexy model x look you know teardrop but if you're gonna fit a third row seat it's probably going to be more like a crv pilot look right i mean this would be the only tesla that has a a non-teardrop shape right and it could it could we just don't know we have no idea so i mean i'm excited yeah i'm excited to see what it looks like when we finally get to see it um i want to know if this is important to people so i mean the number of people you can fit in a car is a pretty important factor if you have a family of you know uh relatives and friends and people you want to fit like i know that when i was thinking of the model x seven seats was a big deal to me because i knew i need to be able to bring the five people in my close family plus friends and relatives right so is this important to you guys i'd like to see in the comments below whether you think this is something that's important to have a third row seat in the model y all right so here's some stats jesse on the model three mm-hmm. since uh you're a model three owner now you're probably yeah. more interested i'm i'm a part of these statistics um, yeah, statistically you are, because uh, the Model 3 was the number six passenger car in the U.S. in November. So in terms of sales. In terms of sales. So check that out. That's pretty cool. It wasn't like a one-time thing that they right. were able to pull off. Um, and it's ahead of some really high-selling cars. So mm-hmm. that's really cool. Also, we see that if sales continue like this in December, the Model 3 could surpass all of Model S's sales over the entire sale, you know, ever since the car came out in 2012 ever in the u.s so wow so, so i mean so the model three if 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 it sells what, the way we think it will in december there'll be more model more threes in sold the in US. just that small amount of time it, i mean the the model s has been selling since 2012 wow so it shows that this is the 
the price point that right. people want. So there'll be more Model 3s in the world than Model Ss. Yes. For the and first time in the whole world. Exactly. And the cool part here is that Model 3 does not appear to be cannibalizing Model S sales. Now explain that. So, I mean, if we look at this graph here, you can see all the different bars for all the different months. Okay, so blue is Model 3 sales. Right, and as you can see, that's going up and it's huge, huge sales, right? And the Model S is kind of down below. And that green line is Model S sales, uh, sort of taking a three month average. So you okay. can see the, the blue line is the Model 3s. Oh, I see, so Three if, month average. So I see, so the, if that green line was heading down, that would show that there's a kind of a average lowering of sales, but right. it's not, it's heading, it's like pretty flat. It's pretty flat, it's headed slightly up. I mean, right. so, so Model 3 sales are not stealing from Model S sales. It's not like someone's going, you know, I was going to buy a Model S, but forget it. I'm going to buy a Model 3 instead. Or that is happening and just more people are looking into Tesla and deciding, oh, I want right. a car from Tesla. Do I want a Model 3 or do I want a Model S? That's very important information because you wouldn't want to be stealing from your own car sales. Big information here about the Tesla Gigafactory 3, which is the Shanghai factory. Mm -hmm. According to the Deputy Secretary of the Municipal Party Committee and the Mayor of Shanghai, Ying Yang, they have issued an interesting statement following a meeting with the heads of Tesla China. They said that basically they've completed land leveling and they're about to start construction at Gigafactory 3 and that the project is expected to be partially put into operation in the second half of next year. Wow. Now, we weren't sure if this was true, so we did a little digging and we found some satellite images. If we kind of swipe between uh, three days prior and three days forward, we're looking at the end of November here, mm -hmm. we see that there does appear, if you look carefully, mm -hmm. to be construction going on on the, on the property. And once, as we kind of know, once you start construction, that's a really good sign because right. generally now balls are rolling. If it's true that they could put into operation in the second half of next year, I mean, that means that starting in, you know, late summer, fall of 2019, we could be looking at some minor production. Right. I mean, that's less than a year. This is just months away. Yeah. I mean, so really if, if they could be rolling Model 3s out of that factory next year. In China, they don't have to pay the tariffs in China because they made the cars in China. That would be incredible. It'd be really huge because the Chinese market is a great market for EVs. I just want to say, like, a lot of times we announce that some company has made an announcement, right? We're going to be doing something. Mm -hmm. And then we wait and we wait. And months and years later, we hear about some, you know, groundbreaking, whatever. Tesla here, if, if this is true, is moving at lightning speed. I mean, I want to draw your attention to the Gigafactory 1. It is not complete. I mean, they're I mean, still building it. Right. It, it wasn't even close to completion, you know, today. It's not, right. it wasn't close to completion Yeah, because a year it's ago. done in a modular fashion. Right. You build like a square and then you can start working in that square while you build the next square. Exactly. So what they can be doing is, you know, I'm not sure what the blueprints of the building are. If it's similar to the Gigafactory 1, they can, you know, start building those chunks out mm -hmm. and start producing in the chunks. That's a really smart So, point. I mean, you you know, the idea of like, well, the building need the fact you need to finish the factory before you can start building stuff. Not quite true. Isn't quite true with mm -hmm. the building of this scale. All right. So what are we looking at here, Jesse? We're looking at the Mahindra Trio. It is India's first all-electric three-wheel long-range vehicle. Okay. So you say long-range. What do you mean? It has 130 kilometers of range. Oh, that's not bad because this is, a, this is an urban, like you're just putting around the city. Right. It has a five-year lasting lithium-ion battery and it has very low running costs, low maintenance because, again, you don't have an engine in there. And a lot and those of... And those are the worst kinds of engines. Can of I just course. mention, so like when you have a traditional one of these, like those engines have really no emissions controls on them whatsoever. Right. So you're just spewing out a mixture of oil and gas, like just horrible stuff. Right. There's no catalytic converter. No. It's just out there. Right. I think that this is really exciting. It's cheaper to run just because electricity is cheaper. Mm -hmm. And again, no maintenance no and, and, pollution. And more efficient than an ICE motor, which is right. is basically wasting most of its energy to heat. Right. I think that this is exciting uh, to have such a big company like Mahindra making one of these. Because, I mean, there, we've seen other rickshaws that, you know, have, you know, 14 lead acid batteries in them and some electric motor off something else. And they work. Charging takes a, long, a lot longer. These are going to charge a lot faster because mm -hmm. they're lithium ions. Um, the range is excellent. I think that this is exciting. This is, um, you know, the adoption for this is going to be pretty big because once people experience it, I think it's going to be huge. So the dragon was captured? Is this some is this some reveal from Game of Thrones no, next season? No, 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 no. The dragon capsule, 
launched by SpaceX uh, last week, was uh, caught by the International Space Station. Oh, that's right. Yeah, SpaceX tweeted, Capture confirmed. Dragon was captured at 4.21 a.m. Pacific time while flying over Papua New Guinea. Dragon will spend about five weeks in the space station. So, yeah, the SpaceX's 16th resupply mission to the ISS, it carried 5,600 pounds of supplies and payload. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell me about this next thing that happened, Jesse. So, right. the Falcon 9 that launched it, when it came back down, it didn't land as planned. What happened? Right. So, I was watching this live. And um, so, you see the, the, you know, the camera that's looking down from the rocket that's going to land. Yeah, we're seeing it now. Yep. And it just starts spinning. Right. And then they had cut the footage. Right. And I was just like... Oh no, like it's going <laughs> to explode or something. We basically Elon then released the footage later. Mm -hmm. Um I guess they had lost, you know, contact with the rocket at that uh, point. no, they they cut the you footage. Think they, okay. they did not want But the anyway, they to see they re-released it so that now we can see it mm -hmm. here. So here's what happened. So basically, yeah, it it got out of control, but then it seems to be regaining control. Right. So what happens is it was spinning because the grid fins, which are basically, you know, like on an airplane you have your uh the, your control surfaces, yep. your ailerons, mm -hmm. and elevators. Oh, and those grid fins, they're right. like small, like the size of my hand, right? Um, No, like let's take a picture. Let's look at this picture here. They're taller oh my than a man. And that is a solid piece of cast titanium. What? Which is insane. Those got stuck. Oh, no. Because the hydraulic pump failed. Okay. Which meant that it put it into a spin. And then right before it landed, the you know, the rocket kicks on to uh, slow its descent so that it lands nicely. Now, part of this... Uh, maneuver is as it's falling it's actually aimed towards the ocean and oh, it's and then only it towards the end the, the grid fins actually use the whole body of the craft kind of like a wing to, to sort of slide itself over they call that a dog the, leg right, right to, to land it over onto the landing so pad. that's done on purpose so that if there's a problem it'll just hit the ocean right like it, it did right it doesn't smash and scuff up your landing now, pad it didn't destroy itself, right? Right. It was actually able to slow its spin right at the very end. It used its rocket motor to to stop yeah, the spin. Yeah, can you explain this to me? When we used to launch rockets, you know, when you were a kid, mm -hmm. the, it's just a fixed rocket. But, right. but these rockets are gimbaled. They move. Gimbaled. So it's able to actually direct, and it has quite a, a gimbal throw on there. So was this like a program that figured out how to slow down its, its rotation? Yeah. I That's mean, amazing. It, it's partially that. It's partially also opening up the landing legs for anyone who's uh, used office chairs before. Um, you know, it's oh, rotational. Right. Um, but yeah, it was able to, you know, actually land on the water. It, uh, it then obviously f tipped over. Um, but they recovered it. But it didn't blow up. No, and they recovered it. Basically, it looks like it's pretty much intact and they t were able to tow it back to shore. Right. I have no which, idea if this is ever going to fly again. Which, I mean, this gives you some great views. Check these out here. I've, I mean, normally you're seeing it standing, so you don't get to see it from underneath. We right. get to see the whole um, engine. We get to see the landing. Yeah, it's like when it's, a tree falls, yeah. and you get to see it's it really in cool. a different way. It's really interesting. All right, it's time for the lightning round. All right, here we go. So it turns out that Tesla surpassed Daimler. By what metric? Market cap. Oh. Remember, if you take the value of the stock times the number of shares, multiply those together, you get the market capitalization for the company or what people think the company is worth. And last month, uh, Tesla beat out BMW. Uh, so this shows where Tesla kind of stands in the whole scheme of things. As you can see, they just beat out Daimler, which is the parent company of Mercedes. So Tesla is now worth about $63 billion. And again, that goes up and down every day according mm -hmm. to the values of the stock, but that's roughly what they're worth. And uh, this gives you some idea of what it would take to become the number one in the world, which right now is held by Toyota with $197 billion of market cap. So we asked our Patreon viewers, uh, when do you think Tesla will surpass Toyota in market? cap and uh, we threw up some numbers here we threw up you know 2019 to 2020 and 2021 20, to 2022 and i kind of thought people were going to put a lot of the more than a decade or never right uh turns out nobody said never right uh, only three people said more than a decade most people said that this will happen between 2021 and 2022 i mean i was going to say three years but it looks like most people are agreeing that in about three years tesla should beat out to toyota that's exciting so we've been talking a lot about these big container ships and how much pollution they create. Well, it turns out that Maersk, which is one of the biggest container ship companies, just put out a very surprising statement. They said, we will have to abandon fossil fuels. We will have to find a different type of fuel or a different way to power our assets. This is not just another cost-cutting exercise. It's far from that. It's an existential exercise where we as a company need to set ourselves apart. We've been able to absorb the last 10 years growth without adding to CO2 emissions. It's a good starting point, but it's not enough. 
Not just governments and countries, but also companies and industries need to make a change. The maritime industry and Maersk need to take their responsibility. Wow. Little surprised. Yeah, I'm very surprised. I mean... I know that 2050 is a big time frame. I mm -hmm. mean, their goal is to do this by 2050. But you have to keep in mind the assets they own are not the kind of things that you can just junk in a year. Like, you have to get their worth out of them. So it's going to take some time before they can start bringing online all the new ships. But if they're really true to this commitment, mm -hmm. I'm really excited because they're the industry leader. Right. I mean, I'm just wondering how they're going to do it. Is it new ships? Is it retrofitting older ships? I mean, because if you see. get rid of all the bunker tank, you know, the fuel tanks of the ship, that's a lot of room for batteries. Yeah. Even a little bit more efficiency on some of these huge tankers could be huge in terms of CO2. So NEON stated that they saved about $40 million over the last 12 months on their 100 megawatt power pack in South Australia. You remember wow. this, Jess, the Hornsdale. Right. This was the biggest battery in the world. Yep. 129 megawatt hours. Yep. And so this will be crazy. a three-year return on investment. That's crazy fast. What else has that kind of return on investment? Like nothing. I mean, nothing that I can think of with this much, this big. Right. Maybe a gold mine. If you find gold right away. Yeah. <laughs> so there's been a new Tesla mobile app update. Oh, what can you do on it? Um, you can now view nearby charging options in the charging screen. So you can tap a location to start vehicle navigation. So this is before you even get in the car. So if you're like, oh, oh I'm so going like to need to oh, charge. So if you're like sitting in a cafe while your car is charging and you're trying to figure out your next stop or something, you can do it from, from there. So Faraday Future is in a financial crisis. I I feel like they've been in a financial crisis since they began. We thought they might have been out of it because you remember, Jesse, that Evergrande uh, was this company that came in and said they were going to give them $2 billion for a 45% stake in the company, mm -hmm. which would have been make them flush with cash. Right. The problem is, as Faraday Future just said, recent financial crisis was brought about by investors Evergrande Health refusing to make its scheduled payments. And not only that, they won't allow them to do further investments. So they're basically saying, hey... You can't go ask for more money from other companies, and we're not going to pay you. So I, I didn't realize that they have to make, like, monthly payments. I thought that they were just like, here's an account with all the $2 billion. Like, I I don't know. I think it might be a little different because it is a Chinese company. Maybe mm -hmm. there's different rules. All I do know is that there's an arbitration relief that they're trying to seek, and that's going to take two or three months. And so in the meantime, they're going to have to furlough, they've announced, uh, many of their 1,000 global employees just to be able to stay afloat. So right. they're asking their employees, like, sorry, uh, we can't, you have to stay home, um, and we'll see if we can get this straightened out. I mean, this company has been a nightmare since practically the beginning. I know. I, it just gives ammunition to people who are like, electric cars can't work, see? Look at Faraday Future, see? It can't work, it's broken. It'd be great if they were making cars and selling them to it people. It shows you how them. hard it is. Yeah. I mean, it shows you that when a company does it right, that it wasn't easy, like a company right. like Rivian or Tesla. Like, that's right. amazing. Yeah. So we've heard of the big uh, battery companies like CATL mm -hmm. and uh, Tesla, of course, and mm -hmm. Panasonic. But there's this company that I hadn't heard much about. It's SK Innovation. It's a Korean company. And they're going to be investing $1.67 billion to build an electric vehicle battery gigafactory, basically in Jackson County, Georgia. Wow. SK says that the first phase will represent an investment of approximately $1 billion, and it will create jobs for more than 1,000 advanced manufacturing employees. Now, they haven't given a timeline yet, but um, just to give you some idea, the Tesla Gigafactory 1 now has a capacity of about 20 gigawatt hours of batteries. So we're probably talking somewhere in that range once this you know, factory gets online. Yeah. Audi is making big investments in EVs. Their interim CEO, Bram Schott, said, we are systematically moving towards electric mobility and are consistently prioritizing future topics. So they're making a 14 billion euro investment plan in electric mobility, digitalization, and autonomous driving by the end of 2023. Now, give me some concrete numbers, Jesse. Like, what, what does that mean? So by 2025, Audi says that it will offer approximately 20 electrified models, about half of which will have all electric drive systems. Okay, so can you so further that break would be that down? 10 new battery electric vehicles over the next eight years. Oh, that's not, that doesn't sound bad to me. I think that this is a, about as fast as you can go for your car company. I mean, releasing new models, especially with a completely new and different technology, hmm. I think that. 10 in eight years is about as good as you can do. Now, they'll also have hybrids. When they start releasing them and people start buying these cars, because 
there are some people that won't buy a Tesla because it's I've never heard of it, right? Right. As soon as they they buy an Audi e-tron and they drive it, I think that that's when the the switch happens. It's gonna it's comparable enough to a Tesla that it's actually going to make a difference. If you want to drive across this country, pretty soon you'll be able to do it. You know what country I'm talking about? Uh, Liechtenstein. You I mean, can you can already do that. You. You just need it's a like bigger a, it's bigger country like a five than watt solar panel you could get across Liechtenstein. It's, it's a little bigger than that. Mm. There's a country you can't quite drive across yet. Canada, really? Yeah, check this out. If you look at their map of superchargers uh, coming online soon, should be enough superchargers to get yourself across Canada. As Americans, we are very uh, lucky that we can just be like. I'm going to get my Tesla and just drive across my country. You can't really do that in Canada. You have to go into the United States, right. which I imagine is a pain. I'm sure. The borders are not easy. Right. So Clean Technica just released this article. And check out this chart here. This shows that the U.S. is predicted to have the lowest coal consumption in 39 years. Wow. Not so since 1979 1979. have we used this amount of coal. It went up. And wow. then it came down. And you can see that peak there. I mean, that was a lot. And look how fast we're dropping down. Like, yeah. see all that growth? And then it's just going... Mm -hmm. I, I hate coal. Mm -hmm. I hate coal with the burning passion. <laughs> of, a of burning passion. A, huh? <laughs> a, an electrified passion. <laughs> all right, it's time for our video contributor story. What do we got this week, Jesse? We have Kevin from Pewaukee, Wisconsin, just showing you that you can charge anywhere. Hey, Zach and Jesse. This is Kevin reporting from Pewaukee, Wisconsin. I'm here at my favorite fueling stop for my conventional gas-powered Subaru. However, as I look around here, I find an electric vehicle charging station. While this is not a level 2 charger, it is electricity nonetheless. And you will find this on PlugShare as well. So the point is, no matter where you go, you can always find a place to plug in and charge your vehicle. That's probably the funniest charging center I've ever seen. Like, it has right. a sign. Like, I've seen outlets, of course. But mm -hmm. this is like, charge your car here. It's Honestly, it's, it's that's, that's really all you nice. need. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. Remember to head on over there and see some extra footage that you're not going to see anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And it's only you only have to give us as little as a buck a month. Right. So and go we do, do it. it. Keep in mind, do it four times a month. That's a quarter per Patreon bonus stories. You get multiple stories. That's like. Can you even get a cup of coffee for a quarter anymore? What can you get for a quarter? Gumballs. That is the only right, thing so you can get for a quarter. Gumballs or Patreon bonus stories. Yeah. Hey, we're back from the Patreon bonus stories, and it's time for our Patreon shoutouts. These are people who give us $5 or more a month, and they're super important mm -hmm. to our show. Who do we got this week, Jesse? We have Philip Grimm, Cease Timmerman, Daniel Gulame, Daniel Wickender, Vassil Layash, Jorgen Nielsen, Christian Magyar, The Wilson Family, Kushal Lal, AJ Montez, Salvador Rosas, Paul Sigador Bjornsson, Adam Siki Payne, and Albert Antony. Thank you so much for supporting the show. We don't do this show without you guys. No, and then we add your names to the end credits at the end of the show. So right. be looking there for your, your names. It's time for Elon's Tweets of the Week. Here we go. So responding to Jennifer, uh, Jennifer had said that a uh, semi off topic here, but started me thinking, could the UI differentiate police emergency vehicles from other vehicles on the road? Is that possible to achieve? Elon said. We're adding police car, fire trucks, and ambulances to the Tesla neural net in coming months. So for those of you who don't have version 9, <laughs> I have version 9, the car can see all around you, and it sees the different cars, what kind of car they are, and it puts it on the screen in different things. Oh, so, so this will be good so if you're if a police car is right behind you, you'll know it's a police car. Exactly. So Clean Technica tweeted out this chart, which shows that CNBC has gone more negative recently. If we look at this first chart here, the blue is positive stories, red is negative stories, yellow is neutral stories. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, CNBC t was looking like they were getting more positive over the last couple right. of months. And everyone was very, they were In like, yay, they switched. Including me. Oh, yay, they switched. It's uh, going to be positive all the time. No, no, no. I knew that this was just a ruse. As you can see right here, they've gone way more negative. And <laughs> right. then this next chart shows it again that basically they'd kind of even been dwindling even talking about Tesla, mm -hmm. probably because there was nothing negative they could say about it. Exactly. And then the past couple of weeks, they've gone pretty much back to negative. So right. Elon responded, 
Interesting. All right, it's time for Community Mail Time. Here we go. Community Mail Time. So our friend Jason in San Jose saw an interesting vehicle on the road. What was it? He saw a Neo ES8. Wait, I thought those were only being made in China. Uh, well, he saw one on the road. So thank you so much, Jason. That's, that's a great shot. Yeah. Hey, you know, uh, this person sent in a pic. This is uh, Jesse, and uh, he just got his Model 3 black one. Um, oh, and he sent some footage. Let's check it out. All right, so it's been two years, eight months, and seven days. That is 32 months and seven days. That is 140 weeks and one day, or 981 days. 2.69 years I have been waiting for this car, and I'm about to get it, and I'm so very excited. It is the Model 3. Here we go. <laughs> So I have uh, my key card and my car. I don't know if you can see it, because it's so cool. That's you. That's me. You got your car this I week. I got my car. Congratulations. Thank you. That's Woo. awesome. You enjoying it? Yes. You barely showed up for the show today. A lot of, uh, there was a lot of waiting for my car, and I finally have it. Yeah, how many days was it? So I had 981. Wow. A lot. Was it worth it? absolutely was worth it i i can't even believe it I've, I've gotten so used to borrowing my mom's model 3 that when i got in my car i was like so this is this is my car this one is my car. don't have to give the fob back yeah i know. realized yesterday that i'm now a tesla owner whoa i had not been a tesla owner before wow we have before. to get you the jacket or something yeah <laughs> i mean i have a tesla jacket so i know the tesla set. owner jacket anyway let's let's move on all right so yuha in finland sent us this video hello check and jesse it's Juha, and I am right now in Tesla showroom in Finland. And as you can see, behind me is Model 3, gorgeous one. And I believe this is the same one that we saw a couple of weeks ago in Sweden. This is the last day to see this in Finland before it's officially start coming here. And uh, we are really thrilled about it. There has been a lot of uh, lines here. and. Uh, I hope to see many, many more uh, on these our roads pretty soon. Okay, see you, and now you know. This is so exciting. Seeing Model 3s in Europe, mm -hmm. it, it, it reminds me that in Europe there are no Model 3s other than the showrooms right, right now. Our friend Peter Anderson just sent us this uh, video. Hey Zach and Jesse, this is Peter Anderson, a Patreon supporter. I love your show. I'm coming to you from New York City, and we're at Columbia University. They've got these great Christmas lights up, and I'm standing in front of a Chevy Volt EV, uh, but it's part of the security and public safety here at Columbia. So they've outfitted all their security guards. They drive around like police around the neighborhood, keeping everyone safe. And this one happens to be a Chevy Bolt. Um, I wanted to let you guys know. Uh, so now you know, and see you soon. Wow, that's so, and you know, he looks so familiar. You know why he might look familiar to me? Cause, um, cause he looks just like, he looks like, he looks like Will Anderson. Yeah, that, <laughs> there's Peter and Will Anderson yeah. on the cover of this album. So um, this album is called Wind Power, and mm -hmm. I thought, Wind Power. We support Wind Power. Right. Let's give away this album. Well, uh, this album also was recorded in the studio. That's right, in so my recording studio. In your recording studio. Solar-powered album called Wind Power. And the most important thing, it sounds awesome. Yeah, it's, it's a, so much fun to listen to. So we want to give it away. So um, we're setting up a Patreon giveaway, but you a don't have... free Patreon giveaway. right, it's free. You don't have to be a Patreon, but you go to Patreon, um, and you'll see there's a post there giving this away. Just post your name in there if you're interested, and be a, be a jazz lover. I mean, if you're you know not into jazz, obviously don't do it. You probably but, won't like it. But if you love jazz, then definitely go there, and uh, we will pick a name for the next three weeks. We'll give away three albums. You're yeah. going to love it. Also... Available on Spotify. Our friend Thomas in Sweden said, So awesome. Love to drive. The new version 9 autopilot is really great. This is some footage from Mr. G getting to check out a Model 3. So basically one of our viewers, Michael, uh, went down to New Jersey and brought with him a little present for Mr. G, which was a broken level 2 charger. Remember, we brought uh, Mr. G a broken Tesla charger. Mm -hmm. And so it's okay that it's broken because... They can fix it. Mr. G is a whiz. His, him and his kids mm -hmm. are whizzes. They, they, he's a shop teacher. He, they can fix right. anything. So basically, they're going to install this at the uh, community college shop so mm -hmm. that level two cars can charge, which is fantastic. Um, and he got to go for a ride in the, in the Model 3. I mean, I just love our community that basically we've got these people who are like, oh, that's 
that's great that you guys, um, you know, did this. So I'm going to do that too. One of Mr. G's students actually is a technician for Tesla. Right. Isn't that wonderful? Like yeah. what a He's great He's going feeling. in for his master's. Yeah. And Mr. G is also working on this. He has his own podcast, which he has with other shop teachers. That's right. It's this growing thing. So we want to give a shout out to that. We'll put a link down below in the yeah, description. It's a, you can listen to it on Spotify. Um, and it's basically a fun weekly podcast they do with shop teachers. Right. So there's this sustainable survey, Jesse. Well, let's just play the video. Okay. Hello, Zach and Jesse. This is Lorenzo from Verona. I'm a computer scientist in a, at the University of Trento. And me and my friends, we want to create this app incentivizing people uh, to take um, public transportation and sustainable mobility in general. Within the app, you're going to be able to know how much CO2 you're not producing by taking the right choices. And it's going to incentivize you to either not taking a car and taking public transportation or carpooling or bicycle or walking. And what I do, need you guys to do is basically fill up the Google form I linked to down below. We just have so many ideas and uh, we just want your help. And with that, we're going to be able to know if we are in the right path. Thank you so much, guys. Isn't that so cool? So go fill out his survey. Help them develop this app because this could be a really cool way to remind people that going sustainable is the way to go. Right. Our friend Les got his new Model 3 and he says they delivered my Model 3 directly to my home 10 days ago. This car is amazing. I would just like to thank you for your referral code because of you, I now get six months of free supercharging and can't wait to get a ride in your next generation Roadster. At this time, I want to thank you and Jesse for all that you guys do in keeping me and everyone else informed for the latest Tesla and EV related news. Oh, thanks, thank Les. Do you, you remember our friend Charlotte? who uh, went to Dundee and she said, when I was a bit younger, I started getting a cough and I didn't know why. I did a research project on it for school with my dad and he said that it could be the emissions. It made me think that I should try to do something about it. A lot of the time, parents don't think about these things until you point out that it will affect their children in the future. If people switch to electric cars, they are reducing their emissions and making the air better for their children. And as EVA Scotland board member Eleanor Chalmers said, what an inspiration Charlotte is. There are millions of adults who need to follow her lead. Our friend Dima in China has located a BYD. Remember we asked the other, a few weeks ago, we mm -hmm. said, um, how do BYDs work? How do you take the battery off the bottom? Check this out. Yeah. Hello, Zach and Jesse. This is Dima from Beijing, and here is that Chinese Tesla alternative. And now I will um, try to look underneath and see what, what's there. So, by the way, this like green templates, it means that they can use this car every day. So, what's, what's inside, what's underneath. So, as you see, here is, here is the battery pack. And the uh, thing is that the battery pack is actually lower than the body. So, I guess the reason for it is that it's easy, for, uh, it's easy to uh, unscrew it. The negative side of such construction is that a uh, car only looks like it uh, has uh, a big suspension, high suspension. But in reality, it, uh, the uh, height of the suspension is exactly uh, as uh, as the suspension of this. Of the he found a BYD. Yeah. Again, you, mm -hmm. you're pointing out, like, we, we asked a question, someone on the other side of the world. Right found the answer, sent us a video, we share it with you, right. and now we know a couple cool things. So first of all, it looked like we saw exactly where the bolts are, right, right. on the edges, like all around the mm -hmm. battery, just like a Tesla was in the Model S and X. And then we saw that the battery is lower than the car. So I thought that that was like an SUV, like with a high yeah. throw there. It's, that, that's interesting. Like, that's like five inch uh, difference off the ground, didn't you think? Yeah, I mean, it, it, that was so cool. I'm so glad you went underneath the car and showed us. Because, I mean, that's exactly what I wanted to see. But I don't live in China. I can't just hop underneath BYDs all day. And the license plate. I didn't know that with that green plate, they can drive any day of the week. Whereas we've realized now that other cars have to alternate. Like, right. there's certain days where you can't drive your car. It's like, oh, it's a Tuesday. I can't drive my car. Right. Our friend Ryan sent us this Santa cartoon, which I thought was great. <laughs> Times are changing. Santa uh, no longer gives cold to I bad hope people. He, I really hope he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Our friend Paul in sunny California is showing off his red Model 3 named Fred with a PH. Interesting. Yeah. He said he named it after he got in the car and just like within 30 seconds, like the name came to I'll him. call it Fred. Yeah. All right. It's time for our Patreon viewer question of the week. And uh, we got this question from Marku. He said, Tesla can create the best products in more areas. They're looking at building a smarter air conditioning system. What should they focus to change the world with next? Maybe a revolutionary way so that every Tesla owner of this in their house will make every house a filtration system and give clean water back to the system just like we get clean water from the tap to drink maybe something better than a hepa filter 
And that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I think I just wanted to point out, I get a lot of emails, you do too, um, and Facebook comments every week that's like, hey, why doesn't Elon fix this problem? Right. And it's because he's really busy because he has a lot to do. He works more hours than all of us. I mean, I think he's worked more hours than any other person alive and he's not even, he's 50. Right. So, I mean, it's a great question, Marku. Right. What could Tesla do next? I guess I would flip it around and be like, that. you had a great idea there. Mm -hmm. um, we need to be inspired by Elon and go either do these ideas ourselves, because mm -hmm. many of you out there are entrepreneurs, or you work at a company that is working on different products and things. Go, if you're the president of that company, then call your people in and make a switch. Or if you are a lower person in that company, give the idea to someone else and be like, hey guys, let's maybe think about making this product. Or right. even if it's not a product, even if it's just like, let's install some chargers at our company, or let's put some solar panels on our roof. Mm -hmm. These are all things that we can do. So let's stop thinking of Elon as the only one who's gonna save us. He probably will, right. but let's all get behind him and do some other things to help him. Right. Ask not what Elon can do for you, but ask what you can do for the world. All right, it's time for Supercharger Reviews, my favorite time of the show. Here we go, let's check them out. The Denver Supercharger just off of Interstate 70 is a six stall supercharger. And when you kind of look around, um, it kind of looks like you're in a commercial business park area. Actually, you're directly behind a Hampton Inn in suites. So there are multiple hotels in the area, as well as multiple restaurants. Oh, would you look at that? Beautiful Model X right there. Oh man, I love those wheels. Oh man, I want those on my car. So if you're planning on using this supercharger and looking for a great place to eat, I got the recommendation for you. Go check out Anthony's Pizza. It's probably about a two minute walk to the west uh, across the street. It's great New York pizza, uh, way better than going to Applebee's, Jimmy John's, or any of the other chain restaurants around here. So check it out. If you do stop there, uh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. So there is my review of the Denver Supercharger just off of Interstate 70 in Northeast Denver. It's a great quick six stall stop, but just know all you got is food, no gas stations, uh, but you do have lodging. So if you're planning on stopping, it's a good charger with good speeds. Check it out. Hey Zach and Jesse, we're here in St. Joe, Missouri, and we stopped at the one of the newest Tesla chargers. Uh, they got a nice little high V supermarket here, a bunch of food, uh, wine and spirits, uh, caribou coffee inside, some nice amenities, and uh, we got eight superchargers. So some space. And we got a few shopping malls like a shoe carnival and a rib crib across the street, so not too shabby of a place. Stop. It's pretty close to Highway 29, so you're not really off the beaten path. It's a nice midway stop between uh, Omaha and Kansas City, or Lincoln, Nebraska and Kansas City. Um, so overall, I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10. Not bad. Hello, Zach and Jesse. Another Supercharger review here in St. George, Utah. We have a 10 stall. Eight stall, eight stall. We've got uh, Don here in the background. So we've got another Model X charging. There's tons of restaurants around here. We got Costa Vita over there. We got the Egg and I, which is like a local little place. We got Pork Bellies, eatery and catering. We got a Starbucks right here. Um, I'm not sure if there's hotels close by, but I'm assuming there are. But it's I'll give it a 7 out of 10. It's got plenty of places to eat, but it is about 10 minutes off the freeway. So that's the only downside to this one. All right, over and out. Keep in mind, you can make these. Yeah, and put them right on our website, and it's growing and growing. We got just hundreds of awesome reviews. Right. All right, it's time for new superchargers of the week. What do we got? We have the 12 stall urban supercharger in Manhattan Beach, California. We've got the 6 stall in Bethany, Missouri. Number 583 in the U.S. is the 12 stall at the Clay Elium, Washington. And number 57 in Canada, number 1394 in the world, is the 16 stall at Victoria, British Columbia. All right, it's time to show the Be Free map. It's gone up by only one business this week, Jesse. We're at 85 businesses. You know what I want. I want 100 at least. <laughs> yes. So come on, people. Yeah, find people who uh, own businesses. This is free. They don't have to like apply and pay $500. It, it's free. free. They just have to 
put their website up, um, offer something to Tesla employees. Right, I mean, check this one out. So this is VR Here Limited. It's half price virtual reality sessions in UK's first virtual reality experience center. They're gonna give a free 30 minute session for Tesla employees. You get to like go in this room and just be in another world. Yeah, so VR. It's in Liverpool, England. So, I mean, if you happen to be there, Elon employee, call them up. Yeah. All right, and for our past video, we just remembered this in-depth that we did about a year ago when we were talking about the largest all-electric ships and is it possible to convert a ship to electric, which is very fitting for what we just heard of today uh, that Maersk is deciding to right. do. So go check that out and see if it's even possible. Amazing that it was just a year ago because that was the those are the biggest ships at the time and now yeah. there are more ships being talked about. Mm -hmm. All right, it's time for our Patreon giveaway. Let's uh, go get that and I'm right. gonna reveal my shirt this is from sfsf and jesse's wearing one from there too so if you guys would like to go over to sfsf and support the show when you get a t-shirt it supports us here and mm -hmm. they've got great designs and we're going to give one away right now it's the Patreon giveaway. this week we have david lloyd Tooker. Congratulations, congratulations david congratulations we're going to send you a, a way to get a free t-shirt at sfsf and uh thank you so much for being a patreon well, thank you for making it to the end of the show. Mm -hmm. All the names that you're seeing scrolling around us are the Patreons who give us at least $5 a month or more. And right. the big names are people who give us even more. Right. Um, and really, we, this is our way of, of thanking you guys for helping us because you make the show possible. Right. And don't worry if you're like, oh, no, the show's over. That whole one hour thing, it's over and I wanted more. Don't worry, tomorrow we're gonna have in-depth coming out. That's true. Um, we have in-depth coming out every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. We do Tesla Time News every Monday. Used to be flip-flopped. We used to not even have in-depth. I mean, there used to be no Tesla Time News. Really? Yes. There was a time before Tesla Time News? When there were dinosaurs roaming the earth and, uh, yeah, I mean, we. This is, this is a thing that we just did one day. Did we plan it at all? Did we like come up with a business plan? No. No. What we did, right? We went on a road trip across this this country um, in a Tesla. We went to, we hit 100 superchargers. Uh, 75. 75 superchargers. We hit 25 states. 25 states. And two provinces of Canada. Yep. In 16 and then days. We, and then we came back and, and we were we had, so pumped. We were so pumped. We wanted to tell you all about the, the Tesla news that was happening because there was very few sources where you could actually get the scoop on what was going on. People told us there's no way we could do what we did. Like they were right. like, you can't do that. Right. We, we sat down in the Model X and we were just like, hey, oh, uh, Elon is thinking of making a Model 3 or something like that. And we were looking at all these other car companies and, and they were said, all saying, they're never going to do that. They're never going to make a Model 3. And now I am driving in one. It's insane. No one's going to watch your news show about a company that's not going to go anywhere. Right. It's amazing. I, I can't believe that this has happened. And the best part is, the best part, you know, beyond all of the all of the amazing stuff that's been happening and we get to report on it every week and the viewers, the YouTube and everything like that is the community. Yeah. You guys watching the show make this community amazing. Do you realize how many people we've met, like personally met? I mean, you know, we've traveled to, to Europe and a little, you know, little parts of this country, mm -hmm. but like just hitting the tip of the iceberg, when we get our amazing roadster, right? And we start actually giving, because you know about this, right? I mean, if you're, look, we got like over a thousand new subscribers this week, so maybe they don't know. But basically when people use our referral code and maybe the program's over, today's the last day we haven't heard. Right. Um, but when, when they have in the past used our referral code to get their Model S, X, or 3, we come to their house in the future, in the Model 3 Next Generation Roadster, and give them a ride, right? Which is crazy. It's influenced other YouTubers to do it too. Yeah. So we're which doing is a great thing. Yeah, we're going to meet over two hundred of you in Europe, Canada, and North America. Yeah. So that's super exciting. Canada's in North America. That's right. It is. We. When yeah. did that happen? <laughs> um. So yeah, we're going to meet you guys, and that's. I'm like most excited about that. Yeah. Just being able to, to meet all these new people. Because we've met, I mean, the people that we've met are amazing people. I mean, Mr. G. Yeah. Amazing. We yep. met Rich Rebuilds because we had the YouTube channel. We That's said, right. hey, you're a up and coming YouTuber. We, we met him when he had, what, like a thousand subscribers? Right, something like that. Amazing. Yeah, Matt Foley from Sunlight Conversions. We, I, Well, you haven't gone on his boat yet, but he's an amazing guy. We got now, to go I can, solar -powered now I can sailboat. drive down there. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, like Peter and Will Anderson. they We met Peter and Will Anderson because um, they sent in a supercharger review 
from like at Nebraska or something. Mm -hmm. And then I got to talking to them. I went to a concert. They're amazing. I Then they came and recorded in my studio. Right. Like now we're best buds. Like yeah. that's amazing. This community is amazing. We're so happy to bring it all together because we're able to actually connect things. I think I was talking about this on our live stream last week. Um, it's just like, it's like we're the operators in a switchboard room. We're just like, what is that again? Because everyone out there has so many opportunities and, you know, being able to connect to these two things and to just be like, oh yes, hang on, uh, or, oh, please hold, I'll connect you. And you just, right. it's, we're so excited. We're yeah. so excited to have you here. This is probably the longest end plate I think we've ever done. It feels long, but it's not It's that good. Long. We give every name that scrolls past. Right the time that it deserves because yeah. they help support the show so much if you'd like to support the show and get your name on there you can head over to patreon.com um and just thank you so much for watching give the give the video a like yeah it does something well thanks so much we'll see you next week now you know, you know.